Okay, so I'm going to give a little bit short teaching. So this is a, a extremely holy place. Uh, and so why is this place holy? What is the meaning of pilgrimage? So then you must know. If not, then come here all the way, then after that go back like normal holiday. Then it becomes really ridiculous. So, but what's so special about this place? This place is, before Guru Bhaji came here, this place was already a holy place. And why is this place a holy place? Because uh, the three great protectors of Mahayana Buddhism bless this place. Okay? Lord Manjushri bless this place. Lord Avalokiteshvara bless this place. Lord Vajapani bless this place. Okay, so in Tibetan, they can say Riksung Gombo, three protectors. So, uh, then Guru Mbuche came here and then uh, he came here to meditate and then he inwardly, secretly achieved okay, this uh, the mandala of uh, the Buddha of longevity, this uh, Amitayus. So, in the other cave inside, you will see this with the the cave Amitayus long life bus. So that's the that's what's different. That's what's special about this place. Uh, and so when you come on when you come on a pilgrimage, pilgrimage really means going to power places, not the ordinary place. Sometimes, you know, when we talk about power place. Many people have uh, the thought that, oh, where is the power, where is the blessing? They don't feel it. But you know, let me turn it the other way around that you definitely can feel. You want to know? Now, if I bring you to a place where many people were murdered, I bring you to a place where, in maybe in Germany, where many people were gassed to death, or I bring you to a prison where many people were hanged to death like a old Melbourne go, the Melbourne jail, right? So when you go there, you can feel scary. You feel scared, right? You feel very eerie. You feel very creepy. So if you can feel the creeps, that shows one thing. You have more bad karma. When you can feel the blessings, you have more good karma. You see, some place, some people who are more blessed, stronger married, they can feel more blessed, their mind more calm and everything. Right? But some people say, no, I don't feel anything. But you say, scary thing, ghost thing, you know, wow, where they got the chanting, got power, wow, they feel, and then they, they say, wow, this, I oh, got this, uh, Umantong, amulet, wow, got this, got that. And some people feel very strong for this thing. This shows, you know, the worldly karma is very strong. So when we say pilgrimage, is we come here, and then we feel this place. You, you feel something, but you don't know what you are feeling, right? But you feel one thing. What you're feeling? You're feeling happy. You're feeling serene. You feel ah, oh, so nice this place. Okay. So now very easy. I'm going to give you all one very short and sharp teaching. But before the short and sharp teaching, you need to do one thing. That is, you need to, we all need to meditate a little bit. Okay? Whatever meditation you know, you just close your eyes. Okay? Experience your meditation. And then, I will continue teaching. Okay? So now we just meditate a little bit. Your mind more clear. Enjoy. Cool breeze. Everything very happy. Okay? Up till now, all this thing is not Buddha Dharma. Everything that you experience is Mara. Everything that this nice feeling, this kind of thing is Mara. When you think that you come here, meditate, holy place is good karma. But up till now, it is Mara. Only you, how then do you practice that you become Buddhist? 
really you think what am I feeling? As Buddhists, you must think, do I really exist? Uh, what are my constituents and proponents that make me? If one particular feeling is the same for everybody, then this feeling must be the same for everybody. But how come some people like this feeling and not like that feeling? So with this you must know, so then this is not stable and this is not lasting. When you practice meditation, you don't practice, you practice Buddhism, it's not the practice to make you feel good. If you practice Buddhism to make you feel good, it's the same as going to find a prostitute, a courtesan, go to a barger, go sing karaoke, sing, dance, and then uh, shake backside, uh, yeah, ha, ha, and they're very happy, same. Now, go to the next higher level because using Dharma to make ourselves feel good. When you practice Dharma, it's not about feeling good. It's about transforming ourselves to realize emptiness of self and emptiness of external phenomena. Self is mixture of cause of samsara and our continuation, our continual actions that make us stay in samsara. This uh, we have to be very clear. Cause of samsara and the action that continue the samsara is very clear. Easy to say ignorance, okay, uh, is the root cause of samsara. But samsara, the, the actions that keep on continuous the cycle of birth and death is the action continuous samsara. Your body, speech and mind, totally right now, whether it's samsara or nirvana, is still not Mahayana Buddhism. Mahayana Buddhism must be on samsara and nirvana. Nirvana is Theravada Buddhism, Hinayana Buddhism, Arhats. Then what is Mahayana Buddhism? You do the same practice, but your mind becomes clear to become... Actually, what is Mahayana Buddhism? And an easy way for you to understand is called waterproof. Waterproof and bulletproof. Why is it waterproof? Because there's nothing to catch the water. You won't get wet. Or even if it's, you're wearing plastic, you're waterproof. Everything that happened, you will face it. You are like an umbrella. You can face the sun. You can face the rain. But you won't be affected. In Mahayana Buddhism, you want to use your body, speech and mind to face your karmic situation but not running away like all these things feeling comfortable feeling nice feeling breeze feeling feel blessed feeling happy all this honestly i can say this is all mara because it will make you feel good make you make us feel oh my practice is very good oh i go on pilgrimage oh i'm this go i'm there right in a way, those of you who sit on the floor, all the dust that is on your body is the blessing for you. Every single dust molecule on your body purify every single eon of negative karma. Right? The more you feel you are comfortable with here, the more you are purified. Okay? So, When you experience anything, you must look at mind and mental factors. Is this real? Is this condition real? Is this condition permanent? Am I, am I real? So you see, just now it's external. Now it's internal. Am I real? Is my condition permanent? Right? And 
is and is what I'm experiencing or what I believe permanent. With this, then you can truly experience something called bravery. You are brave, you know, like a lion standing on the hill and roar. Why? The lion don't run. The lion know he won't fight with. He won't fight with a hyena. Okay, the lion won't fight with all these things. The lion know he is king. You understand? But the main thing right now is this. Before we become the lion, you must rejoice that every single thing that you are you are thinking is also something that you are thinking only. I give you a good example is what is the difference between Theravada and Mahayana Buddhism? You want to know? Okay. You, I honestly give a very sharp teaching now here in the Mandisri mountain. Theravada, self is not real. Self is not permanent, impermanent. But Dharma is permanent. Okay? Because Buddha's truth is forever real. Now we turn Mahayana is this. Buddha's teaching is only a tool, therefore it is not permanent. For example, kitchen knife, okay, kitchen knife, chopping knife and a radish. Is the radish real? The radish is as real as it can get conditionally, right? So we take a chopping knife, chop the radish, chop, radish break into two pieces. Is the knife still here? Chai tao hai chai ma? Okay. The chopping knife only serves its purpose as a chopping knife only when you chop. If not, it is just another thing that is created out of mind, created out of condition, created out of need, created out of craving, created out of desire. You understand? So the activity of this thing, so like Buddha Dharma, is created by Buddha to benefit us like the chopping knife to chop the radish or to chop the vegetable so Buddha Dharma itself also not real but Theravada say Dharma is permanent Dharma is real Mahayana self is not real and permanent Dharma also not real and permanent they are all like rainbow in the sky I'm also, you are also like the same nature as rainbow in the sky. So you and I are like this prayer flex. They exist, but we are momentarily exist as long as our condition stay as it is. Right? Like this rainbow moving. But you are not permanent like the prayer flag. You are not real like the prayer flag. You can see through the prayer flag with words, just like actually you are illusory body, but your karma is like the prayer written on the flag. Then it takes some time for the sun and the nature that you will wash away the flag. Its color, its ink of the prayers. So similarly, when you say you want to be purified, you must if you want to be purified, the most important thing is you must be willing to disappear. What is purification? That means you are willing to dissolve yourself, your identity, your body, your male, your female, your identity, how you look like, how you think, your thoughts, your feelings, your recognition, everything if you are so solid like let's say like this stones this rock you know you are so solid then how can you become like space 
But we create our life to become, uh, make ourselves solid, solid like a rock, so that we feel safe, we feel permanent. So remember, if you want to feel safe, you want to feel permanent, you want to feel everything to be stable and this and that, then you will never be free. That's why there's the meaning called Dakas and Dakinis. You dance in the space of emptiness. Now that you have your body, sing, <coughs> dance, cultivate the Dharma and be, be happy. But don't get sucked into the enjoyment and then, you know, this enjoyment become somebody recognize or cognize you, identify you as this enjoyment, right? So your identity and your belief is your samsara. The moment you have a fixated identity, who you like, who you don't like, and you don't allow it to change, that becomes your prison. That is called your samsara. Your samsara is your prison. You understand? For that, the very reason, the Dakas and Dakinis, the great masters, why, if you realize the painting of them, they are always painted naked because they are free of their samsara already. There's no need. The security is not on one piece of cloth. You understand? Your clothing is your security. Where's the security actually? You, you understand now? Your clothing is your security now, right? But what security can your clothes give you? Can protect your body, but even when you die nowadays, our clothes made from nylon and this and that, when you decompose everything, I, I, I tell the truth, I exhumed dead body before, right? And so there was this one old lady, 90 over years old, she, when she passed away, when we exhumed her dead body, come out, her body decomposed, huh? The funny thing was, at the time I didn't have camera. At the time, of course, don't have a mobile phone with camera. She was buried. She was she was wearing stockings. Her clothes decomposed, but the stocking contained all her toes and everything, all her legs, everything, you know. So I was thinking, oh, the time pantyhose made from nylon. These things not decomposing, <laughs> but the clothes all decompose. So the the pantyhose keep the hip bone and the lower spine all the way all the toe toe bones everything all there upper body everything all decomposed right so similarly right now you think your security is your shoe your clothes your security is the your best security is no need security Of freedom you see so when you need to have guards and you need to have this where is your freedom you understand what you think what you believe and everything cause you so much samsara then there's no no freedom okay so when you hear sound, you can check, oh, is this a real sound or is a manifest sound? So when Buddha said, when the Vajrayana teaching says, everything is nature of rainbow, what does it mean? It means everything happens, but it's not real. Even your body is happening now, but it's not real. Whatever you heard, whatever you learn, also is happening, but it's not real. So that's why just now I, I asked you to meditate. Did you feel good? Did you this? Mm -hmm. If you, I want you to say yes so that you know that you are hooked by Mara. Right? Mara throw flower on you, no? Mara's, the, the, the king of the demons, throw flowers. Uh, they honor you, make you feel good, make you feel, oh, I go nice, a pilgrimage with a Rinpoche, with uh, so many lamas. Oh, this a holy place. This, the more holy the place, the more Mara happen. Really. So that's why when you do Dharma work in temple, when you do volunteer work, you always say, "Oh, we talk obstacle, this and that." When it happen, you know, you should rejoice. That shows, you know, 
your Mara is stopping you. Tell you, give up. Don't do already. Give up. I'm losing the fight. I'm losing the fight. Give up. But when you succeed, you continue to persevere on, and suddenly you say, eh, how come that feeling gone already? Why? Because that Mara disappeared into thin air. Right? Like some people, they say, oh, I really love Buddha, I really love this and that. But then when their own house, you know, they don't want to have Buddha altar. They don't want. Why? I go temple pray can already. My house, no need one, no need. What do you say that? Oh, they they can have everything, but they don't even want to offer a place to to honor the Buddha. They want to have like you know, the altar in your house means that you are offering the best. You sharing your your whole life of illusory wealth, illusion wealth, illusion trappings of samsara. You can offer to Buddha. That's why when you offer, you get a. You get a bell, get doji, get damaru, get the offering, get a rupa. Always get the best ones because this is the best thing you can, in a sense, exchange for all the worldly things you have worked for. Your whole life you work for money, and then you want the best merit, but you give the least. They say, "Nama la Buddha don't need ma cheapest one can ready." Ja orang hot kuih. Understand? Right now, you think from now onwards, everything that happened is this real? Am I real? So everything that you don't like, you know. Anything that you don't like, it means that is the correct one. If you think that your guru is here to make you feel good, ah, you can jolly well go suck eggs every morning. Got hard boy egg going suck lah. Okay, the guru is not here to make you feel good. The guru is supposed to be here to let you feel your shock. Then you suddenly, you know, you have your own wisdom start to arise. Your own wisdom will arise from your from your guru's teaching. Some some light pass over to you. Then you will start to want to continue to feel this light light. By accumulating merit and wisdom, then you can start to see your own condition and other people's condition. That is more important than just keep on praying and praying, pray for blessing, pray for merit, pray for this, pray for that. And we know we have, we go everywhere to pray, just to have some security in a illusory, illusory world. It's like you know, you know what all of us are doing. Do you know all of us are living? Or what? What if I tell you we are all playing our own Pokemon game? You are the living Pokemon. You're you're playing your own computer game. You know. At the end of the day, ah, what do you get out of your game? A false feeling of, a false feeling of. Fulfillment, but the game, this fulfillment, in the game, your 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 character can eat the best meal, but you don't feel anything. <laughs> Similarly, you in in this life, you can have your best food, ah, uh, but you may not feel happy and fulfilled at all. Right. So, then how do we go from here? So what should we do from here? Is what is more important? Then I tell you this, scare you, and then leave you hanging. But I tell you now, start by actually get to know one another and care for one another. We have to start from something illusory, but heartfelt feeling. But you must know. This is the way that we can help each other to sail this ship in the the sea of tears of samsara. Pusa, 要回来，所谓的普度众生，就是要点醒众生，给众生自己有自己的慧光，而不是一整天在那里赶绵羊。我没有可能整天哦。
照顾你。You understand? So, on in your own sense, your own practice, you have to you have to start to be responsible for yourself. Then, when you when you become responsible, other people look up to you. No, the first thing is this: is all of us are living in a world where our our ancestors or our elders show that you know, when something happened, it's not my fault. It's because of this person, that person, there. But never say, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry. I admit, I learn from it. So these two things come very big difference. One is say, oh yes. I admit it's my fault. Sorry, I admit. I learn from it. The other one is oh l a because that person like that a that person like this a that's why this that's why that that's why this that's why that. Which one will you like more? The first one, right? The one that be responsible. Yes, he made a mistake, but that you 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 respect the person for admitting the mistake and continue to do correct, no? right? So this is where it starts. Okay, let you let us all start to be somewhat little bit, little bit responsible, little bit and rest. Let it grow. It will grow. Okay, rather than to say that oh, you know, that's why you see the beginning. Beings really need guru and guru devotion. Later on, the innate guru is you see the guru in all sentient beings. When you start to become being able to be responsible for your own practice and your own commitment and your own guru's union with guru and everything, then really the guru is alive in you. You understand? It can only happen is when you become responsible for your practice. Okay, so this is my little insight for you. When you come, look at the prayer flag. It is a perfect for recognizing illusion. Okay. Sorry, I burst your bubble. All the feel good suddenly. Ah, huh? not supposed to feel good. Then how? You can feel good. The thing right now is this: you can feel good, but recognize it that it is not real. It is a sensation that is nice, but don't be attached to it. You understand? Okay, start by being comfortable at that to recognize every single moment, just like a mirror. They can reflect everything, but a mirror doesn't say, "Hey, stop, stop! I, I like this one. I want to reflect some more." <laughs> cannot, ma? Correct, no? Or you watch TV? The TV say, "I like this scene." Cannot. Don't, don't play first. <laughs> I like this scene. Cannot, right? So it has to be flowing. Exists, but not. Real. It flows, but it's never permanent. So if you think that you you are real and you are permanent, then you why you will get very sick very soon, because your body is teaching you something but you don't recognize it. You know what is it? Your hair keep on growing, your nails keep on growing. Every day, whatever you, you what, our our normal human normal human worldly being. Activity Y is called negative karma. You want to know? Because whatever whatever good there is, we spoil it. Really, I tell you. You want to know? The most beautiful fruits and flowers. We eat the fruits. It becomes shit. The Natural flowers, we pluck all the flowers. We plant. We want to possess it in our house. All the nice things that happen in the uh, all the crystals and everything, we want to go and destroy, bring to our house. Correct. So in the worldly worldly people, really is create a lot of problem and create a lot of bad karma. All the good thing becomes spoiled. Spoiled. But how? What then? Make us a practitioner. We know in our life we need to spoil it. All the good food that we eat becomes shit, right? We are here to make the planet Earth dirty, you know. But now we let's transform it. 
how do you make merit whatever the action that come from it is to accumulate merit offer to Guru Buddha Dhamma Sangha food always you yourself always eat the best food healthiest food don't eat the cheapest food everything everybody say oh I eat the cheapest food then after you get very sick it's wrong love your temple that houses the blessings of the gurus transform all your food and drink and offer to the gurus right your house your work your money used to propagate things that will benefit for the greater good for all beings then really your life becomes transformational right then it doesn't become like a, just your body makes shit and urine and farting and gas. Okay? Right? So when it comes to practice and this and that is like that, sometimes in a situation, you just enjoy the moment you are here. Don't need to exactly 100% follow the time. Okay, like uh, somebody may say, Oh, offer the talk offering to Guru Majid. Must offer in the cave. Then Guru Majid is stuck in the cave, is it? <laughs> or we come to the holy place of Guru Majid and pray and receive blessing. But you can offer the talk anywhere. Yes. You understand? Yes. Right? You must, I must teach you. Don't be trapped by the idea, I come to this place. Uh, is to come to this place. Uh, to get do the top offering here. To do pray here. Uh, must pray here then can. Uh. Then you die. You die, I die, everybody die. Understand? Yeah. The reason, you, if you all want to know why I talk like that, I talk funny. It's because my guru talk funny to me also. <laughs> right, you can ask uh, Lama Shembe, ask Gay Sherat, my guru, Geshi Lama Kunjo. He will talk all the funny, funny things to me. But all the funny, funny things actually make me, he destroy the perspective that I hold. You understand? Yeah, the perspective of many things that you believe it to be like that, but then my guru will talk funny things or weird things or sounds like hums up things, you know. And then after that, the, eh? Eh, what you say true? Ah? Why I think like that? Ah? And what I think like that is actually really cause myself suffering. So, then the seed has soaked in the water start to break out from the shell already. It will start to grow. You understand? So, seems things are not as what you see, what you believe or what you see to be. Understand? Yes. So, we practice as such. So, at the meantime, enjoy the fresh air, see the sky. Mm. So, sky, land, space in between, right? Yes. Nice? Yes. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, that's it. I hope you get some insight. Okay? Whenever you start to feel good about all these things, uh, let me remember, Mara, sprinkle flower on you. Yeah. You try to train and there's no identity, you let go all. Then what's the then the claims then what's the meaning of life? What's the true purpose? Is it to help others to get positive life? Your meaning of your life is at the level of your practice. There's no point to say my meaning of my life to you. But the meaning of your life is to be excellent from what you were. Not perfection. I'm not seeking perfection. But the meaning of your life is you are excellent of over your old past. Be the best that you can be. Or even better than your best. That is Dharma practice. That is the meaning of your life. And then you, remember say, you always say, oh, may you, you know, Joshua always like to say, oh, Sifu Sinyam be the light of the world and uh, pray to all beings, uh, pray for guide all beings. And then I told him straight in the face, no, you and every one of us. Every one of us is responsible to guide all beings to enlightenment. Yes. That is the ultimate purpose of life. And what is to guide all beings to enlightenment? You want to know? Yes. Huh? Is to set everybody's world on fire. Pass on the light. Pass the light to them that they can see. It's like, you know, if you look down the hill at night, right? 
you see all darkness, only one small light, right? You see, did you remember we passed by one river? Mm. And then there are people who live on the river. Yes. Yes. You know we are dead. We are living on a river and we make a fire on the river bank, you know. And we feel very secure, very warm. Oh, the house very nice. I got water. I want water, I got water. I feel very happy. I want food, get food. Are you so good, right? Not knowing the flood can come anytime. <laughs> you realize? Last night we saw that. Yes. Okay. You learn, you know, Tamo Tzu Bodhidharma. His guru gave him very, very harsh teaching. But it is that teaching that one slap, slap the living soul out of him, uh, that after that, he wake up. You want to know what's the, what his guru asked him to do? Bodhidharma asked his guru, oh, I want to learn Dharma and this and that and everything. Oh, I want to be this, I want to be that. Then his guru told him, say, good. Huh? Build me the safe, build me the safest house. <coughs> okay, build uh, that you will feel safe. Bodhidharma built or uh, in the forest, or uh, oh, he built this, built that, and everything. Mm. When he felt safe, lightning and thunder came, mm. the rain came, flood came, mm. thunderstorm came. A few times the house is gone. The third time he built a big strong house with stone and everything, more and everything. After that, he looked at the house, he feels satisfied. Then he, he smiled, then he set the house on fire. This is the fixed security of samsara. Samsara has no security. Remember that. The moment we start to feel secure in samsara, we waste our life. You waste your practice. Whole life, everything, what Guru taught, what Buddha taught, we are the one we waste everything. Really. If you really think you have secure, safe and secure in samsara, you are the greatest fool. Understand? Yes. So, Samsara will never be secure. That's why some of you may think, some people think, Oh, Sifu always ask me to offer this, offer that. If I don't ask you to offer, all your shit whole life, you will always keep your money to do all the worldly things. Right? If you use your money that you, off, you use your life to trade, in for money and you use that money to build body, speech and mind for Buddha, offering and this and that in dedication for others you know suddenly it becomes meaningful you know because you cannot take a single cent of all your money to your next life and the worst part is you save all the money that you don't want to spend when you before you die people start thinking of how to spend your money for you <laughs> Right? Yeah. Then you have to think what is your meaning of your life? You you consider your how you end up as your parents' child. That is your past life. You consider what kind of parents you want in your next life. You consider how you want to practice towards that. Remember that is still in samsara if you are attached to birth. You consider I want to lead all beings to enlightenment wherever it is beneficial for all beings even if you're born in Africa you are willing to go right frankly speaking huh? Africa may be the best place to start Dharma center and build temple you know so many orphans and this and that and then if you teach them Dharma teach them chanting you see some Kagyu and Nyingma they really doing that you know Right, you saw? I shared sometimes video. Yeah. And the African love to sing, right? They love to dance, right? Mm -hmm. Then use the singing and dancing to praise to, to the Buddha's teaching, praise to, to Tara. Mm -hmm. You understand? The fluttering of the prayer flags is called dancing in emptiness. Remember that? Why we put flags? It's called dancing in emptiness. Mm -hmm. It is emptiness, but there's energy in space. Mm -hmm. This energy is our pot potential from our past life. 
the potential is there to move. Move well or move badly. Move towards merit or move towards worldly karma is all up to you. You have your, you have real, de Buddha is real democracy. It's your choice. Your freedom. Understand? I think I talk too much. Huh? I say a huh? little bit teaching. It's become very long teaching. Right? Thank you. May your precious body mind not yet born arise and grow again. Not decline but increase. Okay, so dedicate all this root of merit to long life of His Holiness Dalai Lama. Kelje Lama Subar Maje. Kelje Param Maje. Kelje Chatur Maje. Long life of all Nam Gyal Maje. Long life of Lama Shempen. Long life of Geshe Losan Sherap. Yeah, long life, good health, their Dharma activities, and all flourish far and wide. Yeah. Also, pray for all the Jinjulings activities, boundless. Okay? And all of you, that right now, under banner of the Jinjuling, that you are the one, you are the living banner of Buddha Dharma. Okay? You are the living banner. You are the victory banner. Victory over yourself. Then you are excellent. Okay? Victory over yourself and then you are excellent. Thank you.